So that's only about 3,000 RPM. You can, imagine. <laughs> yeah. you can imagine when I get angry with it. <laughs> What's up everybody, I'm Chris Forsberg and on this episode of Garage Tours, we head out to the west coast to meet up with Steve Strope of Pure Vision Design. Steve and his team have been building some of the most famous hot rods and they have the awards to back them up. We're out here in Simi Valley, California to meet up with Steve from Pure Vision, where they are building some award-winning muscle cars with a classic look. Let's check them out. Steve. Hey, man. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome to Pure Vision. <clears throat> oh, man. Thanks for having me. It looks like you guys got some pretty interesting builds here. Hey, you want to look around? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Obviously, it looks like you guys are got your hands full. You got a lot of builds going on. Some yeah. are near completion. You got some that look like they're completed. But uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do here? We concept design and hand build medium to high end muscle cars is what mm -hmm. we're known for. We'll do uh, a car like the Fairlane. I'm going to show you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Down to a, a very straightforward but very nice like this convertible '69 Camaro. Mm -hmm. The Pretty car standard. behind us. This is an original 1966 dual quad 426 Hemi four speed Dana car which is really, really neat, and he's gonna put around it. He goes, just restore yeah. these, this and that piece, and make sure it rolls down the road, and he wants to drive it. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> so we're entrusted with stuff like this to mm -hmm. that nice, nice Hemi Challenger behind you. Oh, that was yeah. on the cover of CarCraft. Can't say I missed that. No, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a neat car. So all the everywhere in between from, hey, can you put a Detroit speed suspension with bare brakes and HRE rims on our Camaro, to, hey, can you tune up and make stuff on my Hemi satellite a little bit better, to, can you build us a car from the ground up? Yeah, I mean, you got a car like this on the rack behind us, and you can tell that you guys do everything in house. You know, you got it all the way down, sandblasted, putting in all new suspension. Why don't you kind of run through, you know, some of the mods that you're doing on this car? On this car, there was a lot done actually. All the sheet metal from the firewall forward is mm -hmm. uh, redone. His frame rails were rusted out, so those have been completely replaced. We've done lots of chassis stiffening upgrades, uh, a modern upgraded suspension. You can see a modern cradle, oh, yeah. rack and pinion steering, 14 inch brakes from Willwood, uh, plus added structure, uh, tying together the rails. It's got a modern uh, all aluminum third gen Hemi in it, five speed stick. We've made our own rails in the Florida, except they're, I think they're a set of 2007 Jaguar seats. Uh, so they're all power heated, uh, all the supports in it, and we've broken down all the wiring so we can plug in the wiring and make everything work for him. I mean, when you're working with customers like that, you know, some people want a classic, some want a modern, so to know that you guys have all the equipment that you need in-house to be able to do these yeah. modifications, oh, yeah. and you know, basically cater to each customer project individually. But, uh, you know, I heard you point out that Challenger earlier, so. Yeah, the Hemi Challenger. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's go check, check it out. Let's do it. Okay. This car is beautiful. You said this was on the cover of CarCraft? Yeah, it was, which is always an honor to be in that book, oh, yeah. let alone on the cover. It's one of the oldest, Hot Rod's the first, and then mm -hmm. CarCraft came up, so it's been around a long, long time. What you have is a 1970 Challenger that the color is modern, mm -hmm. but uh, it, the car wears it well. It's actually a newer, like 2012, 2013 uh, Dodge color. And, um, but it's still a Dodge Challenger. There's no crazy mods to the body and it's got what they would call old school style mags or rims and tires from the day. So this would ne this build right here will never go out of style, at least with these kind of oh, guys. Absolutely this, you could pull this out 30 look. years from now and this would be appropriate for, for a, say, a late 70s, early 80s build. Mm -hmm. This thing's got a gear vendor's overdrive unit behind the transmission. It's got vintage air AC. It's got a hidden modern stereo. Nice. It's got disc brakes. It's I got. Say, I can up, see those poking yep. through. It's got upgraded suspension from Hotchkiss. It's got great parts on it. You can go down the road. You can drive this to Oklahoma today if you wanted to. It's just a nice, clean, reliable car that can be serviced and worked on. You got your service port here with your binary switch for your AC. So any shop you take it to, they can actually go. Oh, okay, I can yep. service that. <laughs> oh, I can work on that. Oh, I can find it. So it's also meant to be maintenance friendly. And we, of course, we build cars for high-end competition where mm -hmm. everything's hidden and trick and 
and that comes with its own headaches. Of course. But this is a great a, a example of you can build a super detailed car that can get press. You know, guys that are chasing the magazine scene. Yep, yep. But you can still make it usable and reliable. It's got it all. But um, hard to beat a Hemi. Yeah, <laughs> it absolutely hard is. to beat a big mean, elephant. That's, that's what everybody wants. That's what everybody wants. Yep, yep. But um, I mean, like you said, you know, you got these cars are serviceable and easy to drive and everything else, but. I know you guys do some over the top models. Yeah, we got a crazy too. car over there in the other bay that'll yeah. that'll wake you up a bit. All right, let's do it. Okay. So that's only about three thousand RPM. You can imagine. <laughs> yeah. you can imagine when I get angry with it. <laughs> Now this is clearly not your everyday Fairlane. This looks like your guys' pride and joy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the um, the few hours you put into it? Sure, we got about <laughs> six thousand hours into yeah. it. God, man. So a lot of the cars, the higher end cars, I like to have a theme and an idea mm -hmm. that keeps the build very focused. Mm -hmm. I came up with this idea of like GM used to have this thing, Skunk Works. You know, their top secret kind of side where they built their high performance stuff. Yep. So I said, well, what if Ford had this thing called Black Ops? You know, another kind of secret, you know, mission kind of people. Mm -hmm. So inside of Ford, they said, hey, we're gonna go racing next year with this Fairlane body. So build us a test car that we can do anything we want with. We're not chained by rules because we're not gonna put this car into any competition. <laughs> The idea was these Black Ops guys work with this Fairlane body and they're noticing, well, that Jim Hall guy at Chaparral and his Can-Am cars have an active air brake that works with their brake system. So let's incorporate that. I like torsion bars, which besides Mopars, it was used in Sprint Car, oh, IndyCar, tons time, yeah. of different stuff. So the front torsion bar runs inside, hidden inside the frame rail comes out through a notch in the frame rail and links to the lower control arm. The torsion bars for the rear suspension are in the trunk, crossover arms that go directly through, cupped holes through the top of the frame rail down to the quick change in the back. So now we got this neat, hidden, adjustable suspension that they're working with. Quick change in the back from Speedway allows them to change gearing while they're testing things. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the, the rear wheel opening. They were very low on yeah. the Fairlane. It kind of looked like a wheel skirt, you know, grandma. So we raised it, pinched it, you know, show off more of the rim. The striping down on the rocker is very Ford-esque. This striping is from a lot of the, the fair lanes that ran NASCAR. Say your car was white, this would be red. So I did this as a call out, kind of a tip of the hat to Ford's NASCARs running yeah. that here. And then we took apart the dash. It, this had a big, giant, bulky dash pad, threw that away, made the little dash pad at did a nice simple insert with the gauges and the numbers and pointers are done in the same thing as this watch here. It's their, the diver stuff, that super luminova okay. that yeah, yeah. glows in the dark. This stuff, once it's charged up, will glow. So just fun, yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. having fun and, and trying to push some boundaries. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like if you're gonna do a build from the ground up, like you said, you have to have a theme and a direction, especially when you got multiple people on, you wanna make sure you all have the same mindset and same focus. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, you kind of throw it on the drawing board and you all stick to that plan and end up with a car like this. Well, Steve, thanks a lot for having me. You guys You're do welcome. amazing work in this facility. You, know, you guys are doing all kinds of builds in-house from the amazing modern daily driver Challenger back there all the way to the super over-the-top Fairlane. You know, absolutely love it. Love seeing it all up close and personal. Thanks, man. Thanks for visiting.